Hey folks, Brian Keeney with Occam Defense, and today we're talking about the ideal sight setup for the ODS 1775 pistol and rifle. I am a giant believer in always having backup irons on your gun, like a lot of, you know, most of the folks that, you know, James Yeager, Clint Smith, Travis Haley, all those guys I believe are, are big into having irons on your gun. The advent of red dots has been a major force multiplier. Everybody knows how awesome they are. I love them too. Um, I like the Aimpoint Micro style of sights. So that could be a Holosun at $200 or an Aimpoint at $800. Both are a good value. Um, it really just depends on how much money you got to burn on your setup. All of the test targets that we shoot that are sub MOA are on this beat up Holosun here that's missing its caps. And so you can make very precise hits with these. Also the parallax on both of these sites is very low, meaning that if you shift your head, how much does the red dot actually move? You know, the, the dot will actually move into different places. If the bolt is, sorry, if the gun is bolted down and you put a red dot on and you've got it perfectly set up on the target and then you move your eye back and forth, you'll see the dot actually move with respect to the target. The parallax on both the Holosun and the Aimpoint are very good. Um, I try not to trash products. I think the uh, uh, Trigicon MRO is a good optic, but you need to be aware that the parallax on it, as you get off, you kind of fall off a cliff. And so if you're gonna be using the MRO, you need to make sure that you index in the same place every time. As I say, the Holosun and the Aimpoint don't seem to have much of an issue with that. Um, so in terms of mounts, the mount that you use will determine the co-witness and the co-witness is just if you've got your glass sight window here in a circle where is the backup iron sight in uh, proportion to the center of that glass window so a 50% co-witness means that it's dead in the middle a 30% is that you're in the lower third uh, using the arms number 31 low mount which this is here gets you somewhere around 40% 45 somewhere in there call it a 50%. Um, I really like these. Uh, they have the patent on this little bit of sheet metal that um, protects the rail from this cam. Other, They have the patent on it, so there's nobody else that can make this particular design. Um, and this is the one that I like the best. <clears throat> it will work with Holosuns, um, obviously aim points. Any, any red dot that uses the aim point bolt pattern, you'll be fine with. The reason that I feel so strongly about a QD is that if your glass, it's not about the battery going dead, it's the glass getting fogged or muddy or broken or otherwise opaque. You gotta be able with a couple seconds to, to just rip that off and that's a one second, one hand removal. We sell them to our gun customers. So if you are looking at um, buying one of our rifles or pistols, you can add that as an add-on um, at time of this videoing in 2020, I think they're about $80. Let's see, we've gone through all of that. Oh, the last question that I get a bunch is, should I put the red dot in front of the rear sight or the rear sight in front of the red dot? Be advised, obviously, as I move this sight more and more forward, I've got another one here. Obviously, if I put the rear sight and the front sight very close together, the sighting system is intrinsically less accurate. The, um, the uncertainty on where you're pointing is higher. This is why pistols with a longer slide are generally more shootable, more accurate in terms of the precision which with, with which the sighting system can project where the bullet is going to go. Obviously the gun is the same accuracy no matter what sights are on it. So as you go further back, you become, the gun becomes more shootable, in the words of James Yeager. It does not become more accurate. So um, there's an, a compound problem with that, that the farther forward the sight glass is on your aim point, the smaller the angle that you can see through is, the cone, the sight cone of, of what information you can get through that sight um, is decreased. So you've got 
<clears throat> two competing problems. You would like the rear sight to be as far back as possible and you would like the red dot to be as far back as possible. So which one is more important? If you are over 40 or you have astigmatism, meaning that the red dot is starting to look more like an hourglass or a slash or a couple of dots or a starburst, that's unfortunately, as our eyes age, you get something called astigmatism. That can be corrected by using a lens. And that lens in this case is your peep sight. So if you, your eyes are not the best um, or you're getting older, I would recommend putting the rear sight in the rear and the red dot as far back as you can to maximize that sight cone. If you're a young guy or gal and your eyes are great, I might advise you to put the red dot in the rear and put the rear sight just ahead. Also, this is the one of the wonderful things I think about our system is that you can play. This stuff is not set in stone. So you might try, you know, a couple of rain sessions in this orientation and then a couple where you've got it reversed. So uh, your mileage may vary. I can understand both being a good fit. So try it out and uh, let us know what you think. This is Brian Keeney with Occam Defense. Thank you for watching.